Spend only a few minutes back at home anxiously waiting for Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Oh! You look cute! What's up? Hey! I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Most school uniforms do. Jeez, don't make this feel so awkward already. It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. Oh, this is a nice kitchen. Very nice, looks very fancy and updated. I see you brought a lot of stuff. That's Keith carrying a large bag that's probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. Yeah, that's true. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I can count on you to do your part. Well, of course. Surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that, rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Probably not, no. Anyway, let's go to the kitchen that we're already in. <laughs> what? You're not even going to offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, H? Come on. Since when do I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. <coughs> this is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I'm impressed, Natsuki. Seems like I always underestimated you. Damn, she's a strong girl. <laughs> because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Hey, hey, hey. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Yeah? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But... Jeez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. We're getting started at what? A lot of stuff gotta teach you. Eh. <laughs> what? It's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey! Now you are treating me like a little kid. I should I be a little nicer to you, you know? Just because I don't have a mature, sexy figure like Yuri, doesn't mean you should treat me like... Ah. Uh, uh. Natsuki catches a word and her face turns red. Natsuki? Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Eh? What am I apologizing for? I appreciate that you're trying to be nicer. I should have been a little bit more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Ah. Uh, how would you know that? Anyway, just trust me on this one. Gross. Hey! Was that to me? Who else? Man. Let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross? Finally found your weakness, H. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's sat aside enough for now. Finally start to pull things out of her bags so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen's a mess. Again, it looks sparkling clean. Spoons, dirty bowls, flowers, spilled fluid, plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. How much food are you making? Meanwhile, Natsuki's babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Hey, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To colour the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different colour. That way, even the flavours... Even if the flavours aren't different, everyone can still pick their favourite. Oh, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. 
Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. Kinda. I'm not really sure what Natsuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food colouring into each. Wow, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like bacon is just about the following instructions. Presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end. Just looking at it makes everyone else... Everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes in Siori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah. Maybe I'll use food colouring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with food colouring. Yeah, let's get in there. We were using an electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh? The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs the whisk for me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, few seconds, the consistency of icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks her finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my waist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to itch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me causes me to stumble, making her stumble every turn. Gross! You got it on my face! Whose fault's that? It's a big blow of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Mm. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this. Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. It's very flirty. Action's going on here. Who knew you could flirt so much during baking? Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Oh, oh damn! Okay, this is like straight up an anime. <laughs> Stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. Just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. Oh! Damn! Okay, this is progressing very fast. What? what? Oh god. Did you seriously just... Uh, Natsuki is so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. <laughs> Her face is entirely red. H. I really shouldn't do that thing to girls unless you you really like them. You know that, right? Uh, what kind of question is she asking me just like that? How did the mood turn this quickly? Because you licked icing off her finger. This is your fault. I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Like away from the girl. Eh. Uh, I don't know where the fire alarm starts going off. Oh, are you burning something? Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> no wonder. You left a dirty tray in there, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sits on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue the icing like nothing ever happened. Okay, this is a bit awkward now. Ah, that smells good. Cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. Soon as Naki opens the door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. 
Look at how cute they look. She probably shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. Look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff so I hope you can get creative. Here, skip the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really th thin so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. You can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like happy birthday or whatever. Ah, oh, I see. That gives me an idea actually. Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature themed by writing a different word in each cupcake. It'd be fun to see people choose their cupcakes based on a word they like. Eh. Hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. But that's actually a really cute idea, so... Eh. They've been getting it from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. But, well... Natsuki voice trails off. Same with you. Eh? Did you say something? N nothing! Just do the icing. Natsuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the backs. It's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. That'll give me a chance to think about before Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing. Then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look how pretty they are together! Yeah, they aren't- they are, aren't they? I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? Don't see any harm in that? Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Ah. Sarah's is the exact opposite in that regard. <laughs> if she was here, we'd probably be down 10 cupcakes already. <laughs> And she would still eat dinner. <laughs> Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat much, as much of it as I can. Well, anyway. I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Oh, really? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Suri each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. Well, that's going to be a challenge. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me even the way she listens to you. Ah. Yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Suri earlier today. I felt so helpless. Suri always does listen to me, but... Suri, stop turning on. But at that point, it felt like she was couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Natsuki's already about to leave. Feels like the afternoon went by in a flush. Yeah. Did I even take the opportunity to get close to her like I wanted? You, you held her against the wall and licked icing off her finger. I think you got somewhere. Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I shall see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki. Yeah. What you said before about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be, like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over anytime, okay? I think that's possible. I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere. Um, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah. I want to spend more time with you. H. Oh, she's blushing. I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I really would... I, I would really stay longer if I could. Feel the same way as you, so... Hi! Why is the music stop? Wait, Natsuki. Time out! Time out! Time out! I'm not ready for this! Standing inches away from me, Natsuki looks up at me. 
Fear Hill fingers gently clutch at the side of my shirt, as if holding on to me. Her rose-coloured cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? <laughs> my head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft. Press against me. I felt it. For a while now. Uh, Natsuke suddenly jumps back. Is it Sayori? Eh? Oh, Sayori! Hi! Um, nothing going on here. Ah. Uh. Hi, hi, H. Sayori! Just now, we weren't. Sayori, stop going on. I'm not talking to you. We weren't. <laughs> it's okay, H. Can you please turn on the music again? This is a bit awkward. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so. Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'm still. I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any of my cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. <laughs> that is the fastest I've seen Natsuki move. Clearly, Fluster Natsuki hurries off and Siori waves goodbye. Oh, thank god, music. Siori! I thought you didn't want to come- Siori! Go away! I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well. I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki. How close you got to her. Makes me... Makes me really happy. They've had such good... They've made such good friends. It's all that matters to me. Tears start to roll... Fall down Saru's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, H? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? Oh god. It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. It would be so much better if I could just disappear. Siri, don't say that. Siri! Not now! It's true, H. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. Oh, for oh my god. You wouldn't have to put up with me being so selfish. Monica was right. I should just... What did Monica say to you? Monica? Monica's right about what? Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. Put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, H. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Oh, uh, she does have a crush on me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. Did this to myself. H. I like you so much that I want to die. Oh god. That's how I feel. And, and... It's enough, Siori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Siori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Siori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings. I know what you need the most right now. That's what I'm going to give you. No! I like Siori, but I oh, I like Yuri or Natsuki more. And I know if I say you'll always be my dearest friend, that's not going to be enough for her. I'm just going to be honest, you'll always be my dearest friend. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now. But please trust me that I know what's best and what'll make you happy. I'm also thinking like because she's so depressed, like what she doesn't really need is a relationship right now. Oh god, I have a bad feeling about this. I promise I'll get things back to the way they were. I I see. Siori forces his mouth through an incredibly pained expression. Eh. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? Oh, Lord. 
Lord, make me feel bad about my decision. I should write a poem about this. Oh God. Siri. It's okay. Siri! Go away. This is my punishment, remember? Mm. For being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down the path. That's why I came here. Just so I can get the answer I need to hear. And the other thing... You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realise that now. You really do know me better than anyone, H. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. I don't like this. So... Sarah smiles, finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loud as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Oh, you got up again? Do you feel better after that? Sierra looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Okay. Sierra? I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? Nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is support Siori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Siori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if she, if I should be doing something more and, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give her everything I've got. Siori will always be my dearest friend. I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. So did Siori suggest I go to the literature club? So like she could spend more time with me and then we could walk home together. And unexpectedly I ended up liking other girls. It's the day of the festival. Why is there no music again? Of all days I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Siori. But Siori isn't answering her phone. I started going to her house to wake her up but decided that's a little too much. Okay. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I was going to say, don't you need her help, though, for carrying the cupcakes? I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki's already texting up Storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. <laughs> I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Siori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great, too. Okay. H. You're the first one here. Why is there still no music? Thanks for being early. I don't like the fact there's no music. It's making me scared. That's funny. I thought Yuri... I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each desk in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised I didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days this important she'd try a little harder? Yeah, you know she's depressed! Come on! I say that but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. So I feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her age. Especially after your exchange with her yesterday? How do you know that? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Monica? You weren't there. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. Did Siori tell you I went to her house? But... I stammer embarrassed. Does Siori really tell about her that quickly? Um. About how he basically turned on her confession? That makes me seem like a, the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. Don't know the full story at all, so. Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. You're creeping me out. Eh? Monica's being friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came up really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid on the desk. 
Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Where is the music? Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognise Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? Flip to Siori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. One that I haven't read before. Okay, get off my head, get off my head, get off my head. Is it just get, get out of my head? Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get off my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Before I show you how much I love you, before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Oh no. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. H? What's wrong? Ah, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else yours written. Really? Or more than that. I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get serious, so... Ah. Well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? Quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls out after me. I quicken my pace. Oh, God, what's going to happen? What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Siori. It's not a big deal to do at least wait for her or wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told you yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. It's all she needs and why I want to give her. I don't like this. I reach Siori's house and knock on the door. Don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a happy sleeper. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? Who cares? Any case, just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on the door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. No response. I really don't want to have to enter a room like this. Kind of a breach of privacy. She really has me no choice. Gently open the door. What the fuck? What is happening? How's the opening? An exception. Do I need to? What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? Must be. This isn't real. No way this can be real. Siori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. What the fuck? Um, let's press the arch to vomit. Just yesterday. I told Siori I'd be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything would be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession. That's been pushed over the edge. Would it? I don't know, maybe uh, would the same result happen if I said I loved her? I reckon I scream so echoes in my ears. What did I do to her that when she needed me most? Why was I so selfish? It's my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more time with her. Walked her to school. Gave her what I know she wanted of our relationship. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Can I? I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Uh, and! That's it! 
This is a game? What the fuck has happened to Siori? Okay. Do I click load game or that one? Oh, the music's weird. Okay, I think we're in the horror element now. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is hibbity goop. Uh, so you already been right out of the game? And good friends since we were children. You know the kind of friends you'd never see yourself making today, but just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. Wait, if you've written Siori out of the game, then I don't sign up for the literature club. What's happening? We used to walk to school together days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. If she's going to chase me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and let gobbledygook catch up to me. Ooh. I'm not doing anything. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friends walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. Perfectly to Kent, just on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. So is the anime club, but not that there would be any girls in it anyway. School day is ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. Guess no choice but source anime club. H. <gasps> Monica! Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. I have a feeling that's a lie. It's been a while, right? Ah. Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other well, we really talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so generally feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for supplies for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Haha, <laughs> about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing the budget and publicity and how to prepare for the events. Yeah, I know, I've had this conversation with you. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. Hey! A literature club. Literature? Sounds kinda dull. How many members do you have so far? Um. <laughs> Kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members, something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, even one of my members keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. And she is correct! I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. It has words in it, it counts. Besides, a new member is a member, right? Did Monica say she? <laughs> hmm. Hey, H. Am I any chance are you still looking for a club to join? Ah. I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favour? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could, at the very least, visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. Um... No reason to refuse. Besides, how could I refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, oh, awesome. You're really sweet, H, you know what? It's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for materials another time. You're more important. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. 
What is happening? Siori's been written out of the game. I simply follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being genuinely used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, spins open the classroom door. I'm back. And I brought a guest with me. Hey, fucking hell. Eh? I guess. Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club page. Hmm. All words escape me in this situation. This club. Full of incredibly cute girls. So, let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Nope. What? No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Uh, anyway, this is Natsuki. Energetic as always. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It, it's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparable, more nature, mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet you both. So I ran to H in a classroom and he decided to come check out this club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Did I tell you not to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to... Well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, H? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Ruri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you don't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Lich Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But make school events like the festival much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. This is so weird without Siori, because, like, she, I think, what, she pretty much took up most of the conversation in the first part of the game? Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down a teapot in the middle. You keep a whole set of tea in this classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean that, you, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles herself in relief. So H, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mark quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head certainly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not, not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the room for tea cut with a finger. I know this is probably all the same with Yuri's conversation, but I'm worried if I skip it, it might be a wee bit different, so I'm just going to read it all again. My favourites are usually the novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. Telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. But it's obvious by the way her lights up, her eyes light up, that she finds comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I read a, I read a horror book once. 
A desperate grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <laughs> I expect that from Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. Only for a brief moment. Oh, I hate horror. That sucks and that's key because you might be in a horror game. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes door over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. Looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud. And give that back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Oh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that love of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open your up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. <laughs> I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzical at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, H? Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, uh, what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I've only come forth with what's on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at and, um... I lose my train of thought. All three girls stared back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Eh. The girls exchange glasses before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, H. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. You had four, what happened to her? And I've been trying really hard to find new members. We don't find one before the festival. I'm defenseless against these girls. I was supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this. I feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. Besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So a frightened pose is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls? Right. Okay. Decide then. I will join the literature club. One by one the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, H? Yeah. Could be fun, right? He did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. I am so happy. We can become an official club member now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Ah, oh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. H, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Kind of really to class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. Can't wait. Am I just walking home alone? With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. No way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day in the school literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. 
Let's need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. What has happened? You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yeah, sure. I never get to read poems. Oh, I can't read this. O T H N G L S R E A L. Oh wait, nothing is real. Who wrote this? What has happened? Oh, I need to save. Oh, the save. The writing's gone back to her. What? My slots are gone. I had four. Say what the fuck? Oh, okay. So I told a friend I was playing this, and they told me that I should look in the gaming files. Uh, when things start getting weird and I'm seeing what the fuck can you hear me there's a little devils inside us all beneath their manufactured perception their artificial reality is a withering twisted mess of dread loathing judgment elitism self-doubt all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their hosts seeping through every motivation and desire into their stomach forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food into newly opened gash into their skin, hidden only by sleeves of cute new shirt. Such a deplorable tangled mass is already present, every single one of them. All I did was untie the knot. That wasn't here before. Happy thoughts. Oh, that wasn't there before. Is that Sayori? Yeah, because that's her bow. What the fuck? This is a weird game. It deleted all my saves as well. Um, characters? Siori's is gone! Her fight- what the fuck kind of game is this?